but they're really just three things since I just have joined since November 16th, and I will echo the things that uh, were said about Alice Miller that's starting at that point. Uh, Alice really needs to be commended for her leadership in a time when there were no commissioners. And I think the things that we will be talking about and preparing for 2016 and the, the accomplishments we hope to have in 2016 and beyond will always owe something to Alice for being able to keep us going in that period and laying the groundwork for what we'll accomplish. So I wanted to uh, stress that and also say at this point we don't anticipate backfilling the uh, role of the chief operating officer. That's not to say that we won't. But we're going to do a, a process where we look at just our overall staffing needs, what we want to accomplish, and at this point, uh, all of Alice's direct reports from the divisions report to me. Uh, second, we have major communication activity underway today and another one going on today. You've mentioned the roundtable. And second, we will have a communications video scheduled later this month relating to postal issues. The commissioners, as you would know, and then also the executive director of FAP, Matt Bomber, has uh, sent a letter to the United States Postal Service to talk about issues and raise issues related to the Postal Service. And we have a meeting set up with them later in this month. And then we hope to follow that up with a uh, kind of what we're calling a, a webisode, a communications vehicle with uh, key people related to this issue, just kind of a informational video for election administrators throughout the country. So we have that scheduled later, and at the very least, we're hoping that that uh, communications will raise awareness as we enter this important year for elections. And speaking of that, and I think the, to go from Commissioner Masterson's point of uh, customers, the ultimate customer being voters for all of us, uh, we know that voters most often come to the EAC website to look about how to register to vote. And because of that, we're looking at the form for the NVRA, uh, what used to be called a postcard, on our site and the instructions, state-by-state -state instructions. We have some outstanding requests from states that we plan to address very quickly and then also do uh, start a regular process where we will go to the states and do a sweep asking the state election directors to review the instructions, uh, let us know if there's any changes that need to be made to be consistent with laws that we're unaware of, and then make sure that that is correct this time for March 1 on for 2016 as people begin to make sure that their voting information is updated. And in the future, in odd years, we will do that process November 1 to have everything updated every year, January 1, when we enter an even year. So in 2017, we will send out this sweep again November 1 with the idea that it will be updated January 1 of 2018. Those are the three things that I wanted to touch on. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. And I stand for any questions you have. Any questions from the commissioners? No. I just uh, a brief one, and that is I, I know uh, we're working to update the instructions on the form. My understanding is on our website, our goal uh, is to drive folks to the state uh, websites, whether it's their online registration system or, or their state specific uh, registration forms. Is that correct? That's how we have it set up, which is very nice. Uh, I do think that. Um, just there's one thing we'll want to address on our website to make sure that those links are always operating and that we have some backup plan if for some reason they're down. Because if, if the link doesn't work, it will look like uh, there's an issue with our site. And so we want to make sure that we've thought through that. But yes, they are going to the states, which is the best way I think it should be. Thank you. Anything further? Hmm. Thank you, Executive Director Newby. Thank you. <laughs>